Now up to this point, we have focused on generating quantities and earthwork for one single corridor. Now, you may need to create quantities and earthwork for multiple corridors and linear templates and civil cells. A lot of times our projects have multiple files that we need to deal with. So what we want to do is we want to learn how to create quantities and earthwork for multiple DGN files that contain these various corridors, linear templates, and civil cells. So I'm going to go over to a different file now. So I'm going to go up to File Open. I'm going to go up to my project file here. And I called this one Volumes Cut Fill Project. So what I want to do is create my 3D volumes or my 3D mesh elements inside of this file. So I'm going to select this and open it. Now inside of this file, I have all my project reference files already attached. So if I go up to my reference files and review the DGNs that are attached, just click in View 1 to make View 1 active so you can see the attached reference files. You can see I have my MUC DGN files that contains my unsuitable MUC material. Uh, I have my existing pavement that contains my existing pavement material as well as my existing topsoil. So these are my removal items as well as my quantities for those existing materials. And then down here I have my corridors and these corridors are made up of various corridors and linear templates and civil cells. And I also have my geometry and my existing terrain model here as well. So we got a bunch of different file types or a bunch of different civil data here that we want to extract quantities from. So I just want to show you how this works with the uh, multiple reference files attached and how easy it is to uh, calculate our volumes. So I'm just going to close this out. You can see here I got my plan view, my cross-sectional view, and my 3D model here with all my files attached and displayed. So again, we're going to go back to our same tool under model analysis and reporting. We're going to go back to our create cut and fill volumes to generate our 3D graphics that represents our cut and fill and our removal quantities. So again, we're going to be using our feature definition called Volumes Cut and Volumes Fill. So I'm just going to left click through the prompts. We definitely want to use unsuitable material, so we're going to toggle this to Yes and left click to Accept and then Data Point to Process. So now what it's doing is it's going through looking at our existing terrain model, looking at our existing pavement terrain, looking at our existing muck terrain model, as well as our topsoil terrain models that we have. It's also looking at all the various corridors, and it's looking for the design elements and the existing elements and anything that needs to be classified as a removal or as unsuitable material. And it's going to generate our 3D mesh element drawing for us over here in our 3D view. And then from there, once again, we can just get a report from that. And then once it's done processing, you'll see the 3D cut and fill graphics show up in our 3D model. If you come over to the cross-sectional view, you'll also see the uh, graphics displayed in the cross-sectional context. So as you trace along or track along your cross-sections, you'll be able to see the areas where you have pavement removal, muck removal, topsoil removal, as well as the regular cut and fill areas as well. Okay, so um, it's very easy to generate quantities for the total project. So now if we want to go to view the report, once again, we'll go up to Civil Analysis. We'll go down to Quantities Report by Name Boundary. We're not using name boundaries at this time, so we just want to get the total quantities that we see in the 3D model. And we're just going to left-click to Accept. And once the report appears, once again, you can see all our materials listed here in this column, as well as the volumes for each. So you can see we have our cut and fill volumes, our existing pavement volumes, our unsuitable material volumes, as well as our topsoil stripping. We also have some 3D linear feature lengths that are listed as well. And if you scroll down, you can see we have our volume for our aggregate and our curb and gutter. We have all these useful quantities that we're generating or extracting from the 3D model. Now if you want to get a different look at this, we can come over to our volume style sheet here. So this volumes.xsl. And you can see the pavement split here, and you can also see a little bit different type of report. So that's how we can get the total quantities for all of our various materials on the project strictly from the 3D mesh elements and the 3D graphics. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can separate these quantities out based on station range and also take a look at how we can segregate the quantities for construction sequencing purposes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.